What is up guys, Will Gibbons here, bringing you the tutorials you need to become a better 3D render artist. Before we jump into this tutorial, I just wanna let you know this is the material I will be showing you how to create. It's a fun, easily customizable terrazzo that's got kind of a matte background and some glossy bits on top of it. And just to give you a preview of the material graph, this is what we're about to get into. All right, to download any project files associated with this tutorial, head on over to willgibbons.com downloads. And while we're here, I'll mention I recently added a store section to my website where you can access my premium tutorials as well as books and technology and audio and video gear that I currently use and highly recommend. All right, today's tutorial is gonna be all about creating Terrazzo. And if you've never heard of Terrazzo, it's a common material that you might find on the floor, especially in large commercial buildings. It is a composite that usually has a fairly neutral background color and then a bunch of multicolored flecks on top of it. And for today's tutorial, I'm mostly going to be taking inspiration from these color palettes right here. Okay, so we are in Keyshot right now and I've gone over to my models tab and I'm gonna use a model that I got from the Keyshot Cloud Library. Now, if you wanna download a model from the cloud library, click the button in the bottom left-hand corner and then go over to the model section and you can find anything that you would like to use. Today's tutorial is going to be using this soap dispenser originally created by Tim Fair. So thank you very much for that, Tim. Now, after adding that model to my library, I'm just gonna drag it into my scene, which has nothing in it. And the first thing you'll notice is everything goes dark. And if we scroll out, you'll see that our environment is off to the right and it's really small. Go ahead and hit that green checkbox. Control one to add a cube in the middle of our environment. And then we'll go ahead and hit that green checkbox again. Next, I'll select the soap dispenser, go down to move model, and then click pick to choose a pivot. I'll choose the cube, which is in the middle of our scene and hit okay. And now I'll click snap to pivot on the move tool. And then I'll hit the green checkbox. Now our soap dispenser is in the middle of our environment. Control, Shift, Alt, right click will center and fit that model. I'll turn the cube off and then I'll go to the environment, which is too small, go to its settings and make it large. Let's 2000 millimeters should be fine. Same with the ground plane, 2000 millimeters. And we see it's in the middle of our environment. So let's go to our scene tab, select our soap dispenser and then click on snap to ground. Once again, control shift alt right click will center and fit that model. Now I'm gonna move the soap dispenser off to the side. And before we proceed, I will change our environment because the startup environment lacks contrast. Let's go to our environment library and try out the three panels straight 4K just to get started. And then we will hit C on the keyboard to get a solid background color. And then we will go ahead and alt left click on the soap dispenser bottle just to isolate it. Then we'll double click on it and get into the material graph where we will spend pretty much the rest of our tutorial. Let's go ahead and double click the metallic paint, change it to a plastic. And we're gonna set this to a fun color. I'm gonna go with something kind of interesting here. Why not? Go ahead and select your plastic, right click and duplicate it. We'll do this a couple times. Go ahead and double click the top plastic. We're gonna name this one base. Then click the next one down below it. And we're gonna go with blue and then double click on this guy and we will go ahead and make it blue to start. And then I'm gonna add this as a label. So now it goes on top of our base. Right click, let's go down to textures and find a spots texture. So let's go and click C with our spots selected so we can see what is happening. We'll change it to a diamond cell type and we're gonna go ahead and increase the radius. There we go. Let's take our fall off of 0.01 to have a nice sharp edge. Let's increase our distortion to get some more random shaped pieces. And under levels, I want to actually reduce the level scale so they are a little bit more uniform in the size. So we'll go down about 1.2. And for my levels, I will set them to two. I think that looks pretty good. Next, we're gonna use this as an opacity map. Now, if white is equal to one and black is equal to zero, white is where the material will be completely opaque or visible and black is where it will be invisible. So if we plug this into blue where the opacity socket is, it does exactly what we expected. So we want to invert this basically. And I'm just gonna go to the color and change the black swatch to white and the white swatch to black. And now we have blue pieces of terrazzo on top of our base color. And as you can imagine, we're gonna do something pretty similar for the rest of these. Let's go ahead and right click and duplicate twice. And what we wanna do is double click on the top one, turn off sync, 
double click on the next one, turn off sync, and the last one, turn off sync. Go back to the second one, and we're gonna take, uh, let's actually hit C to preview it, and let's take our seed and set this to one. And this will give us a totally new distribution of those flex. But let's go ahead and change a couple more settings. We'll take our levels up to three, and we'll take our density down a little bit. And this time I do want to have a higher level scale. So I'll type in 1.7. So we should have more small and big pieces. And for the last one, let's go ahead and do something similar. Okay, C to preview. Let's take our seed and set this to something like three. And then let's go ahead and take our levels up to three. And we'll take our level scale up higher as well, 1.8, and our density down quite a bit. Cool. So now we're gonna plug <clears throat> this into our opacity for each of these two labels. Let's go ahead and set this plastic to something else that's bright and colorful like a green. And we'll plug this into our label. Now we have green and then let's go ahead and do the same down here with maybe a white. So right then and there, we've got a pretty simple terrazzo. It's not perfect, but it's decent. Now, if you don't like the way these are stacking, you can see some of these are in the same exact location. Just go into your seed and try a higher value to get a more random distribution. It's looking quite a bit better. Same with this one. Maybe we want this to be quite a bit different as well. Now, if you're looking to get some color variation between each of these pieces, you see how we have pure white, pure blue, and pure green. What if we wanna get some more variation of colors in there? Right click, down to textures, camouflage. See to preview, make it small, something like one. And now we're gonna choose all di different colors. Let's go ahead and just choose a bright blue. And then what we're gonna do is actually just pick the same bright blue, and then we're going to move the Q slider over a little bit. So it's still a blue, but it's a different shade of blue. So what we're going for here is a pretty much analogous or monochromatic looking stack of very similar colors that have a lot of saturation in them. We also want them to be pretty bright, so a high uh, value brightness. And then what we wanna do is take our uh, mix colors checkbox, turn that on, and then we can increase our spray to kind of uh, blend these together. So let's type in two for our spray, maybe three. All right, so now if we plug this camo texture into our diffuse for our, our blue pieces of terrazzo, we can see that they actually have some color variation going on inside them. We're gonna go ahead and plug this same node into all three of the plastics. Shift, left click, drag to select multiple nodes and move them together. And now what we're going to do is use a utility node called color adjust to change the color of each of these pieces of terrazzo. So if I want, I can take this one and play with the hue slider and it will change and cycle through a whole bunch of different colors. So now without changing all of those individual camo colors, we can just use a hue slider and change them all together. So once you've dialed in your colors using your color adjust nodes, be sure to go ahead and label each plastic label so you know what it corresponds to. Now, once you've got that set up, you can always go back into your camouflage and do things like play with your spray value so you can have it less blended. You can also maybe reduce the scale just a little bit so we can see a little bit more of that splotchiness. So if you wanna break up the glossiness of this uh, material here, Go into your base plastic and add a little roughness, say 0.1, and then the rest of these other flecks are all gonna be completely shiny unless you go in and change the roughness values of each of these as well. Now, the other thing you can do to add a little bit more depth to this material, if these look too flat for your liking, you can grab another outbound socket from the spots and plug it into the bump value, and they will catch just a little bit of light on the very edge, and that amount of light is gonna be controlled by the bump height in this texture, which you can set here at 0.1. All right, if you wanna save this material to reuse it in the future, go ahead and give it a name. I'm gonna call mine um, Palm Springs Terrazzo. I'll save that to my library in my custom folder. Next, we'll close this material, right click, show all parts, and that's gonna bring back our soap dispenser lid. And I think that we need something a little bit more appropriate. and. I'm gonna go with the gold because again, to me, this is this kind of 50s, 60s, tacky sort of glam style. I'm gonna go ahead and set this off to the right here. 
Maybe add a little bit of roughness to this gold here. Next, I'll go into my environment and change the background color to be a fairly similar color. I'll set my camera to a 70 millimeter focal length. And then let's go ahead and check out, we've got our lighting tab, I'll go into product mode. Maybe I'll increase my brightness and contrast a bit on my HDRI. Finally, because I've moved this off to the right hand side for my thumbnail, it looks like it's kind of tilting to the right. So I'll go to my lens settings into the shift lens and I will estimate the vertical shift. And then I will use my uh, vertical shift slider to bring this back into view. And now it doesn't look like it's tipping over the right so much. All right, guys, there you go. How simple was that? A nice, easy terrazzo material that you can customize and create all sorts of fun variations whenever you want. Hopefully you guys learned something today. If you did, make sure you smash that like button down below. And it would mean the world to me if you would take a second to go ahead and look through the playlist on screen now, because I think you might find some other videos that you'll enjoy as well. Until next time, guys, happy rendering.